and all the women too should learn from it. Acts chapter 12, we are going to read from verse 1 to verse 7. Acts 12, 1 to 7. Please, children, church leaders, can you coordinate 0 to 5 years old? Let them go to be immunized. If they have not been immunized before, for it. 0 to 5 years old. Now, let's read together. Can we be on our feet as we read together? After the count of three, we're going to stop at verse seven. Let's all be on our feet. One, two, and let's go. Now. Let's go. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hands to harass some from the church. Verse two. Let's go. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. Three. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. Verse four. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Verse 5. We stop at 7. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Verse 6. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the doors we're keeping the prison. Verse 7, and that's where we stop. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side, and raised him up, and saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Please be seated. God bless you. Can you show us verse 7 on? Yes, and leave it on screen for just one minute. It says, the summarizing part shows us the theme of the men's convention. The angel said to him, do what? Arise quickly. And when he arose, what happened? His chains fell off his hands. Now I come again. The angel said to Peter, do what? Arise quickly. And when he arose, what happened? The chains fell from his hands. Now why did the angel come to tell Peter to arise. I told you I won't take your time. It's a wake up call that I'm sent to do today. Why as an angel, why did he say to Peter, arise? And why did the chain fell when Peter arose? Now if you notice something, go back to verse 6. Go back to verse 6. I want to show you something. Verse 6. Verse 6. Now I read. And when Herod was about to bring him out, look at this. That night, Peter was what? sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the doors door were keeping the prison wait for me can i have two men please two examples two men come bro come my school please you need to come come and stand beside me now the bible says he was bound look at me i want you to see what happened to peter in between two guards this one was standing like this face me face me yes you to face me. They bound him hands and feet. And these two guards held their weapons, watching over him. They didn't sleep. But I, I want you to look at something in that scripture that God have put in my heart to use to talk to you. And when error was about to bring him that night, Peter was what? Look up now. Peter was what? Look at the scripture. What was Peter doing? Now, did you imagine how a person could sleep in such an environment or situation. He was chained both hands and feet. Two officers were watching over him. Now, for you to chain a person, it means that that condition is not what? It's not conducive at all. One day lower, one day lesser. I want to make you there ensure when you can look at your daddy, Peter will say, in son, you will time on you. Now, what do you think would have made Peter to be sleeping under such a condition? 
Now, when I was studying it, look up, you know what I discovered? I discovered that Peter is like so many of us today. We find it easy to adapt with every condition that we find ourselves. Now, for Peter to have found joy, or can I say, can I, comfort, yes, to sleep in such a condition, maybe he had concluded in his mind, if it's going to lead to death, let it lead to death. If this is where I will pass through to make heaven, maybe even, if, if this is the will of God, there must be something that must have given him rest. If this is the will of God, Jerry, let me just die here. Now, and God is saying for me to tell you that those that will arise are those that do not accept every condition around their life as the will of God for their lives. I want to buy my today. I want to get a key. 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 Now, those are the people that will arise. Because we expected that Peter should do something different at that particular time. Maybe Peter will have prayed, you know. Maybe Peter will have called upon the name of the Lord in praise. He didn't do anything. Peter just instantly concluded, I want to sleep, Joe, if this is the will of God for my life. You know, and that is why so many people are not making it in life. That's the reason why so many people are still where they are today. We find it easy to accept everything we see as the will of God for our lives. Even when it is not working well, they find it as, they see it as the will of God. Now, and listen, I want to tell you this truth. Whatsoever you do not challenge remains. I come again. Whatsoever you refuse to confront will remain. Onkonto bataku. Whatsoever you refuse, thank you, sir. Whatsoever you refuse to challenge. Do you know that it was the church that was praying, not even Peter that was in the condition. Other disciples were where they were, they were busy. Oh, ah, ah, Lord, deliver Peter. Lord, deliver Peter. Peter still find the comfort to sleep in that condition. And that's how some, some men are. That's why things have not changed for them. They are always comfortable with the results they have. They are always comfortable with whatsoever comes their way. Listen, you must learn to have a choice in life. Did you hear me? You must learn to have a choice. Don't be living life as if whatsoever come. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most. Listen, you don't live life like that. In this life, you must learn to have a choice. Tell your neighbor, in this life, you must have choice. Peter's attitude reveals it. He was able to sleep at such a time and place. Why? Listen, he had accepted his condition as his fate. Don't ever accept your condition as your fate. Don't ever accept it. I told us yesterday, your aspiration for the next level must never die. Don't let it die. Don't see yourself as, this is how I'm going to end my life. If you see yourself like that, it means you are like Peter, sleeping in chains among two guards. So many people are like this. They are quick to adapt. Quick to adapt whatsoever situation they find themselves. I told us yesterday, I said that's the problem we have in Nigeria, my country. In Nigeria, we don't want to challenge anything. We just feel that we don't have choice. When we have choice. Now, the election is coming on next year now, in a few months' time. Now, if every electorate, everyone with their PVCs decide to say, okay, I will stay in my word, I will cast my vote, and I will stay until it is counted. You will see that people are already concluding, eh, hey, Atimentu Manwin, Badibu, 
bad daddy, eh, at him to my win. We are quick to adapt, and that's what the enemies of our nations, our nation is capitalizing on. You voted somebody into power to go represent you as, as a federal rep. He was there for years, he didn't do anything. Now that he, he needs your election again, he's coming around. He's now telling you, hey, you know what? You know what? Now I know that you need street light. Now I know that. Where were you before? Where were you before? Now, because he now came, spray some, some cash. Everybody will be saying, let's vote for him. Let's omawani. Oh, Listen, we must come to a point where we need to know, understand that you should have choice. Listen, in this life, if you don't have choice, life will offer you whatsoever is available. Why will Peter sleep in that condition? Let's move on. Imagine if the church didn't engage the principle of prayer. Why are people still where they are today? Can I tell you the truth? They are where they are today because they are quick to adapt. So all the men that are here, I want you to understand that no matter what you are facing now, don't conclude that it's the will of God for your life. Did you hear me? You just continue to tell yourself that where I am now is a passage to where God is taking me. And no matter what you are facing now, don't turn what you are facing now as your final bus stop. It's just a transit. I'm passing through this way. This is not my bus stop. Don't sleep there. I thank God for what happened to Ghana. Today, Nigerians want to go to Ghana. I was watching on, on, on the internet that Ghanaians are now deporting Nigerians. That when you get to challenge if board a cross-country board, you get to get a boss, you get to Ghana. Now, Ghanaians, once they say, they say, when they discover you are a Nigerian, especially you are a youth, they handcuff those people that are coming in, put them in the next bus, stamp deep, deep, deported on our passport Ghana and why did Ghana become like that because one general Rawlings decided to say no this thing must stop he stood up and said no why will a politician rule and hand over to his son he now got to a point in Ghana it looks as if the people that were ruling were just exchanging it just exchanging it just exchanging it until this General Rollins came up and said, no, no, we are going to end this. Ghana must not continue like this. He organized for a meeting when he took over government, invited all the top politicians and executed them. Yes, the world court charged him for mass murder. But do you know that he brought change to Ghana? The Bible says when the wicked is in power, the people mourn. Now, I'm not saying a general list should arise. No, I'm saying every Nigerian should agree. Okay, if they say we are moving forward to 250 naira, let everybody stand up and say, we are not going to buy. We are going to shut down the... We are not going to buy you. Ah, a lot of wealth. But you see, Mr. A will say, you know what? You know what? As long as we can at least see it, we will not need to queue. I will buy Mr. B will say, ah, I cannot even sleep ah, without, uh, without light. Let me buy two liters. Mr. D will say, ah, oh God, I cannot do without my phone. Let me buy one liter. Then before you know it, we'll adapt. How much is 250 per liter? Eh, kasha timarora. Kasha timarora. We must wake up. Nigerians must come to a point that we Nigerians should know that, listen, the success of our nation is lying on our hands. You know what I'm talking about, Nigeria, Nigeria? Since last year, God started showing me a vision that I have a calling to Nigeria. Now, when God showed me, I shared it with the senior man of God, and the man of God said, you have a calling to speak to the nation. I was telling my children this morning we were going, Everywhere now you get to, you see youths are always putting rope on the, on the road. They are collecting money. I asked some of them, why are you collecting money? They say, eh, we are planning for carnival. There's, that's what we call anarchy in the land, where there is no law, no respect for law. We were going through another road. Some young, young boys, they should be around their 14, 15, 16. 
They closed the gate. They were collecting money. Ah, ah. I asked them, what is this money for? He said, it's for this road. We are repairing the road. I said, what have you done? I have not seen any repair. And they said, we have tried, we have tried. It's 100 naira per car, 15 naira per, per bike, biker. And if you don't pay, they won't open the door. And gradually, every Nigerian is gradually becoming like Peter. We are sleeping in chains among two guards. If not that the church was praying, Peter would have died in that condition. I want somebody to arise. Now let the change we are talking about begin from even your own life. Tell yourself, I don't want to continue life like this anymore. Stop sleeping in chains among two guards. Stop it. Stop sleeping in chains among two guards. Begin to aspire. Let the change begins. Let the arise begins in your mind. You begin to tell yourself, I do not enjoy this kind of life. I don't want this kind of life to continue. Listen, once you begin to have that conclusion in your mind, then this convention team is already burning in your heart. Do you know that Peter was still sleeping even when his angel came? Angel Yeluania ah Peteru. Peteru. Dide. Eh. So you again did this, I'm speaking to you, men. Arise. Don't adapt to that present condition. Begin to desire a next level in your heart. Hello. Begin to desire a next level in your heart. Begin to desire a next level in your heart. Begin to desire a next level in your heart. Even if you are falling before, rise up again. Now let me quickly share this testimony with you in one minute before I hand over. Now listen. Listen. Many years ago, my mom just called. He said, Pastor, she's of blessed memory now. You are the, my first son. I want you to prepare yourself leave Nigeria, come spend some time in Joburg. I said, okay. I agreed. They sent documents. I went to the embassy. Listen to me. Submitted everything. I got the report that I should come back for it. On the day I went back, I opened the envelope they gave me. I saw denied. And instantly I said to myself, maybe it is not even the will of God for me to travel. Maybe it is not the will of God. That's where we deceive ourselves. It is the will of God for good things to happen in your life. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus, good things will begin to happen. Amen. But can you, should you know this? I want you to know this. God cannot lift you above your desires. So, I, my mom called. He said, Pastor Alpha, I said I was denied. So, that's it. I am not going again. I won't go and waste my 30000 naira to buy, uh, to pay for any visa again. My mom didn't talk to me. She called my wife. Persuade him. Ah, women are trying. Persuade him that he will need to go back to the embassy. When my wife first came to me, she said, ah, I know it's not the will of God for you to travel again. I said, yes, yes, yes. It's not the will of God. He said, but you know what? Before we can conclude that it's not the will of God, why not try one more time? If it's not the will of God, they will deny you again. So I packaged again and I went. Now, do you know that this time when I went, within two days, they called me back. When I went back, I was given the visa. Then as I was coming back with the visa in my hand, I was thinking, is it the will of God? Is it not the will of God? Is it the will of God? Is it not the will of God? There was a terrible accident. The vehicle that I was in, two of the, uh, the brake pad flew off on motion. The man struggled and struggled and struggled. Thank God he was able to stop the car. I was saying, baby, this is not the will of God. This is a bad sign. He fixed the brake pads again. As we were going, I sat in front. The bonnet opened on high speed. And broke the windscreen. Da! The windscreen broke on me, on him. He could no longer see the front. And he was on high speed. 
Thank God a bus driver was coming. And the bus driver just told him, was shouting at him, don't worry, be going straight. There's nothing in the front. Now, Martha, break. Dear, 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 dear. My you was also, my you was also. Turn to the right, turn to the right. Till he stopped. I said to myself, maybe God doesn't want me to travel again. I won't use this visa. Now, can you see what the devil was using to put the wrong impression in my heart? No matter what you are facing, don't see it as your bus stop. Your angel is around. I say your angel is around. What is required on your part for you to arise? Can you see that the angel did not put him, did not, did not pull Peter up? Because angels are spirits. They can't hold flesh. No matter what, how much you pray, God will still need for you to arise, for you to arise. No matter how much you pray, God will not arise. How do I say that you will understand? God will not be the one to arise in your place. Peter, arise. And as he stood up, the Bible says his chains fell. I'm summarizing. The message is long, but I have to stop it here because of time. Listen, my main message to you is don't be quick to adapt to the condition that is not conducive for you. Did you hear me? Don't be quick to adapt. Don't conclude that a negative experience is divine. Don't conclude like that. No matter what you are facing, let your aspiration still be great. I know I'm coming out. I know I will make it. I know I will enter purpose. I know I will not die like this. But if you keep quiet, fold your arms, sit down, and stay there, it means you are sleeping like Peter in chains among two guards. Will you arise? Are you sure you will arise? You have to arise. Let me preach to your neighbor. Tell him, arise. Don't stay where you are. There's a better place for you. Let's welcome the men with a wonderful clap of hands.